Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Luke Core Automotive. Today we are wrapping up this Infiniti QX80. Came into us with some timing issues and a bunch of other stuff. And apparently we are getting pretty well known for this kind of thing. So, um, thank you very much. For those of you who are not aware of us, we are a small shop here in Central Ohio. Uh, and we are a shop with a YouTube channel. Not a YouTube channel with a shop. This is what we do professionally. We fix stuff. And um, all of the vehicles that you see here are customers' vehicles. They are coming to us because they saw us online or they've heard about us or whatever, and they bring those vehicles to us. This truck came out of Nashville, Tennessee. The one you guys saw us do before came out of uh, Louisiana. We've got one coming from Cincinnati. We've got coming, one coming from Minnesota now. We've got one coming from Georgia. We've got one coming from Maryland, because apparently the internet now knows that we know what we're doing when it comes to these dual overhead cam Infinity motors, which is great. It's extremely flattering. Thank you all so very, very much. Uh, I just want people to understand that Yes, we have some really cool stuff that we work on, hot rods and race cars and all that kind of stuff, but the stuff we do that pays our bills is stuff like this. So for those of you who bring your vehicles to us, we do very much appreciate it. It is you guys that pay the bills, that keep the lights on, that let us do that kind of stuff. So time for Rich to get back to work, get this thing back in one piece, and then we'll move on to yet another one of these things. Though we probably won't keep sharing every single one of them on video because you probably don't want to see us do the same job over and over and over again. Anyway, let's get to it. Well, you can see I've got my engine all stripped down to the rear block. Uh, I'm going to spend a little time cleaning these gasket surfaces off, get them ready for reassembly. Uh, my timing cover is already cleaned up. My cam. <clears throat> my drive cam is pretty beat up on this one. Somebody had replaced the puck and it's already worn through. It wasn't rotating at all. So, new drive. New high pressure fuel pump, new high fuel pressure pump, drive cam, new chains. Ironically, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt were all loose. So I'm gonna make sure I torque those when I put them back together. My oil bar looks all right. It doesn't appear to be damaged. So I got all our parts ready to go back in. New puck, gear. Another gear. I should have two of those. I think I'm missing a gear. Let me double check my parts. Maybe that's my other gear. Yep, yeah, that's my other sprocket. Sprockets, sprockets. Good deal. Let's go back together. Careful on those metal uh, head gaskets, they'll open you up like a razor blade. You need to make gloves with fingertips that are made out of scotch brake. <laughs> like a thimble, like a sewing thimble with a scotch brake pad on it, so you don't damage your fingertips when you're doing this stuff. That's a good idea. Somebody should do that. I'd buy that. What have got? Like erasers that are made out of an abrasive. They use that in body, in the body shops for touching up little details. So all these pieces that I took off here have to be cleaned, scraped, scotch brighted. Um, we've got an O-ring here. One here, one here, one here, one here. And then when the oil pumps in, there's two more. So there's quite a few little O-rings that go in here that have to be put back in. And we replace all of those with new units from uh, Infinity. When I'm in the engine, I don't put anything but Infinity parts because it's just I know they're right and I know they'll last for yeah, you know, 100 to 200,000 miles. Probably fast forward, nobody wants to sit in here and watch me scotch break this thing. I got a little 
coming out of both my squirters. So I put I put ATF into this main bearing uh, feed, which also feeds these two squirters, and I do it with a red fluid so that when I put the oil in there, I can see the color change in the fluid. I've got red fluid dripping out of here, and I've got red fluid dripping out of there, so my oil squirters are clear. I don't have to worry about my oil squirters. They're going to do their job. Uh, let's see, I'm scotch braided. Let's clean it off. And then it's time to sling some chains back up on here. These guys are dry, crumbly. Tough little guy. Find that one. O ring, O ring. O ring. They're only nine foot pounds, it's not a lot, but we want to make sure they're torqued correctly. So those two, those two, the pivot bolt and the pivot bolt. Left bank, right bank, left, left, right, right. Uh, these are all 12 foot pounds. And these are nine foot pounds. Our rings are still in place. Let's sling some chains. The other link is for my crank. Looks about right. My mark on the yellow mark on the cam, mark on the cam, mark on the cam. Right. <sighs> Passer side, we have white. Sorry, driver's side, left bank. White keyway right yonder. In 
you uh, talk to somebody besides the car right now? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I got Justin standing here. He so wanted to make a big. Oh, see, we That's did. what you get for interrupting me. Funny bone. Want to do that on camera? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Well, everything's on. Everything's locked down. These tensioners are just oil filled and spring loaded and they lock into place with these little C clips. So if they're not damaged, I've reused them with success. A lot of people will replace those, but they're not really a wear item. They just extend and they do their job. So all my chains are on, all my timing marks are lined up. Um, so with that, it's time to start Dressing this thing back to its uh, normal state where it's running and driving. My bottom clean. I still need to clean my. I need still need to scuff my oil pan, but it's clean. My front cover's clean. I just cleaned it in the parts washer. So I think I'm gonna run a beta RTV on this uh, front cover. Bolt it up. O-ring, 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 O-ring. They're all still in place. I have oil flow through my squirters. So I think it's time to go back together. Then I'm going to get some lunch because I'm getting hungry. Well, time to lock down all my front cover bolts and replace my seal. Everything's in. I did put some high pressure lubricant on the cam. That way I've got a good wear in on it with my new lifter puck. Where is my impact? It is over on the alarm rack. And my two hidden bolts. I don't know if those are factory original VVT solenoids or not. The customer put new ones in it. He chose to have me reuse those, and that's fine. I normally use the Hitachi ones if I replace them. But his are... He said he just put them in, so... We will use them. We clean the RT, old RTV off of these guys. Put on my new seals. Slippery little sucker. There we go. Gotcha. Those probably could be reused, but they don't cost enough to not replace everything that we come into contact with. We get these cleaned up, we'll glue them on. And then it's just, you know, reassembling the whole rest of the car covers on so I can start hanging on my accessories. Hitachi, made in Germany. That's a part I can trust. You can actually see how worn this one had gotten from running on the cam lobe. And that will affect your pump cycle. So Pretty big damage there. New pump, new lifter, new cam. I'm getting down to the end of the big stuff. Um, I have to do, I've got my new O-ring there, my new O-ring there, new O-ring there, and then a new O-ring drops into the pan right there. That guy got my oil pan cleaned off. I'm ready to set it on the dowel. Lock it down. Wipe my gasket surface down one more time and make sure it's oil, oil free. All these O-rings came out of this engine. They were pretty dry and they were cracking on me. So it's always good uh, practice to replace them all 
any O-rings that you dislodge, you replace. Made in Mexico. That's how she goes. Side up. Yeah, there's a point for that guy. It's so new it's still got the memory in it from being in the package. I don't know it together and it stored it inside. Looks like this one just had a belt, an idler pulley, maybe a tensioner pulley put on it. So we're going to use those parts. They're good to go. The owner had just put in new uh, VVT solenoids. So normally I would replace those, but since they're new um, and he's confident in the parts quality, we're just going to reduce those. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish putting my underbelly stuff in. So I can put my rack and pinion back in and uh, my under cross members, sway bar, new sway bar bushings. Well, these front sway bar bushings for this truck are only available at the dealer, at least that I've found so far. So it probably has a larger front sway bar than the Nissan Pathfinder. Pathfinder is it Pathfinder that this thing is the sister of. I think it's the Pathfinder. Armada, the Nissan Armada. That's what it is. So let's put our rack bolts in. There they are. They didn't want these bolts coming out. Those aren't going to break off. The engineers want these self-locking nuts to be replaced whenever you remove them. So the three new rack bolts, all new drive shaft bolts and nuts. Closer. New radiators in. Ready to hang my front underpinnings.
had one knocked off almost three quarters of the way around. See, I knocked the weld off from there to there. It wasn't sunk in at all. There we go. That's what I was looking for. All right, well, I'm finishing things up. I got my uh, section re-welded in there. I think it looks all right. It'll hold. It was actually cracked on the weld itself all the way around. So I knocked off the, the old weld. You can see where it wasn't even attached. I tried welding it to dirty metal and probably didn't have enough heat. So I ground it down smooth, put a bead all the way around it. And I just reinstalled the manifold back in. I got to tighten up my last two motor mount bolts. And that's pretty much it. I'm waiting on the drive shaft to get back. I'm excited to have uh, U-joints put in it. Which actually, two-wheel drive, you have to drop the differential down out of the back of the truck to get the drive shaft out, which is inter entertaining. But I think I'm about to button this thing up, change my oil filter, and hang my front bumper. We are almost done with this one. Got another one coming from Cincinnati. Should be here on Saturday. Hopefully I can tear it down this weekend. Looking pretty good. Well, I've dotted my I's and crossed my T's. I think I've got everything back together. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and roll this thing over, make sure it fires up and runs, and then I'll finish hanging in the front. It's on the nose of the car. Um, the battery looks like it's charged up. I reset my battery cables because they weren't seated all the way, so I can clean the terminals and reset those. Um, let's kick it in the guts. Oh, squeeze. Suck it in, Rich. Now, we always say we show the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sometimes we make mistakes. We're human. Minor setback. That's why you check. Good news is my engine sounds good. My oil pressure came in instantly. We just gave this customer a little extra rust prevention. Rust preventative measures. <laughs> Let's try that again. up after I get back from physical therapy for my knee. Um, knee's doing pretty good. We've had a bunch of weather changes, so it's been a little tender, but it's working a lot better than what it was before the surgery, so that's a plus. Um, I'll let this bag of oil dry do its thing while I'm gone. I'll be back, put my front nose on, hopefully drive this thing home tonight. I'm going to put about 100 miles on this thing and make sure we don't uh, have any more issues that we were not aware of. Uh, see if anything pops up. 
we go from there. Thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, please comment below. Thanks for coming along for the ride.